Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode we are going to be in career mode for the duration and I want to get us on a better footing in terms of funds and science and, and technology obviously. Uh, but first things first I wanted to take a look at the upgrade opportunities. I, w I think uh, 18 tons is fine for now but um, orbits visible in map. I'm wondering uh, how we get to the point where I can create maneuver nodes. Uh, I don't actually know that, but, uh, patch conics visible in map. Okay, 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 okay. Well, patch conics, uh, patch conics is, uh, showing the encounters. You remember in our last episode when we went to the moon, it didn't really show the encounter with the moon ahead of time. Uh, we just sort of had to go over there and hope that we actually had a, a moon encounter. Uh, but in this case, uh, when I upgrade this, it will show... The moon encounter. Well, that's that's not what I need, really. I need uh, much more than that, so I better save up. And of course, I don't even have enough funds to do that as it is. Oh, this upgrade is really serious. I better start saving some cash, huh? Um, yeah, and that's that's the topic of this episode. The thing I want to cover in this episode is single stage to orbit systems and recovering them. So let's go to the VAB. Now, in Kerbal Space Program at the moment, uh, you can't really do what Falcon 9 does. The SpaceX Falcon 9, what it does is uh, it recovers the first, or attempts to recover the first stage. And the first stage actually goes only part way through the launch. Obviously, it doesn't get into orbit all the way. And they uh, pull it back down, which is, which is easier than getting something all the way into orbit and then bring it back down. Uh, but we can't do that because if you uh, try to do that, you can only control the either the main mission, which is the second stage and everything else, or you control the first stage, but you can't control both when they're both in the atmosphere. So, so we can't uh, control two vehicles in the atmosphere at the same time. Uh, there are mods for that. Uh, there are mods for everything in Curl Space Program. Uh, so you can get a mod that will allow you to take care of the main mission first, uh, getting the second stage to orbit and all that, and then switch back to the first stage and bring it back down. Uh, one of those is uh, called FMRS. Uh, I think it's Flight Management for Recovery Stages or something like that. Uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, we can't do that in the stock game. So if we're going to try and recover a stage, we're going to have to get into orbit. Uh, or, you know, assuming that orbit is our target in the first place. If we're just trying to get to somewhere on Kerbin itself, then we don't need to worry too much. But uh, let's say we're trying to make a stage to get to orbit. And if you're going to try and recover it, you need a single stage to orbit system, which means just one stage gets all the way into it uh, gets all the way to orbit. And we can do that pretty efficiently around Kerbin. Around Earth, it's a lot harder. Okay, so uh, here are our notes from last time. We don't need these anymore. Bye bye. Okay, so what we need to do is calculate what our maximum payload would be. Okay, and that's pretty easy to do actually with a single stage to orbit system. Uh, Orbit is 4,500 delta V, uh, 9.81 just always happens. And of course the ISP, I'm going to be conservative again and go with the sea level number instead of the vacuum number. Really it's somewhere in between, but uh, that will give us the margin to bring the stage back. So uh, the margin that I get from being conservative here will be the margin that I use to bring back the stage. So times ln of the total mass divided by empty, which means without fuel. Okay, so that's our, and that's R, obviously, that's the mass ratio. So once you do the math, and okay, let's do the math. Calculator, run, calculator. All right. Okay, so that's the that's the ln of the mass ratio, and then to undo that, we do e to the oh. Will it, will it let me do that? Okay, yes, it does. Okay. So the actual mass ratio R is equal to 4.19. And we did this before, and actually we should do 4.2 just to be safe. And if that's 4.2, and the total mass we know is limited by our the, the game. The game is limiting us to 18 tons. So 4.2 is equal to 18, 18 divided by the empty mass. So the empty mass, we can get that. It's just uh, 18 divided by 4.2. 4.2 4 
4.28. Okay, so oops, switch back here. So empty mass has to be equal to 4.28. Now, we've got an engine, so that's part of our mass. And if we uh, get rid of calculator for a sec, the engine is 1.25, so we have to subtract that out. Oh, so we have to uh, subtract out the mass of the tanks. Remember, the tanks are 0.125 times the mass of the fuel. Now, here we have 13.8 tons of fuel, ideally, right? It's 18 minus 4.2 is the fuel that we burned. So, oops, sorry. So, how much is that in terms of tank mass? 13.8 uh, times 0 .1, uh, 0.125 equals 1.75. So that's tank. 1.725. Okay, well that doesn't leave us with much. How much does that leave us with? Okay, 1.3. So there you go. Uh, the amount of go here. So payload mass 1.3. So if you want to build a single stage to orbit system with let me get calculator doesn't let me click out for some reason. With this engine, your payload mass, conservatively speaking, 1.3. Now, what happens if we change this to something a little bit better like uh, 340? And I'll just do it quickly and I'll show you the result. Okay, so that leaves us with 1.685 as our payload mass. So that's a lot better. And of course we can expect uh, continuing improvements if we use better engines. But that's about the best we can do with the engines that we've got right now. So that's, that's a tricky business. That's not a lot of mass when you consider that the pod is 0.84. Now if we were going to use the, the probe part, that would be easier but we don't have any good way of controlling that and we'd probably have a lot of inefficiency bringing it back down. There's also the matter of actually touching down and whether we want to use landing struts. Um, the landing struts would be helpful to keep it nice and balanced, especially since it's going to be pretty tall. Take a look. Um, well, let, let's go with the original thing. Let's say we need 14 tons of fuel and the uh, let's uh, aim for that first and then we'll scale back if necessary. So our normal, we don't need a decoupler between the pod and the rest of the rocket if we're going to bring it all back down at the same time. So all we need is the pod and that, and that's already how much? 0.9, it's actually 0.94 tons. So that's already 0.94 tons. And then we need how many fuel tanks? We need seven of these guys. But as you can see, we're, we are already getting quite a tall rocket. This is not very good. now. Radial, de uh, radial coupling in this case. We're not going to decouple it at all. Uh, that's many more than seven. Let's say... Well, that's six. We could try to do something like this. Drag in the game is sort of weird, so we don't actually have to worry about it. But then... We've got a curious situation where we've got the single engine. We can't carry four engines, obviously, because that'd be too much. Uh, I don't think this is going to balance very well. If we could put landing struts, they're extra mass, but let's say we did put them. And let's angle snap them. And we're short of a little bit of fuel. We can add that in like this. Okay, now we're at 18.1 tons, and that's probably because we're a little bit higher than the amount of fuel that we want on here. Well, it doesn't look like my normal photogenic sort of thing. And, of course, we've got the problem we're not bringing any science up. What kind of science can we put on this thing? Not much. But this is a recoverable vehicle. Now, we could dump the science tree for now. Let's Let's take a look at what the actual delta V of this right now is. Okay, so let me just get that off to the side here for a sec. Okay, so if we went with 320 as the estimate for the ISP on this engine, then this right here has a delta V of 4,483. If we go with 340 for the ISP of this engine, which is sort of in the middle, uh, we would get about 4,700, a little bit over 4,700. 
So, so yeah, so this is uh, good to go uh, for Orbit as far as I'm concerned. Bringing it back, uh, well, it might be tough to control where it ends up. But there's another problem. Uh, our empty mass with this is going to be pretty heavy for this one parachute. Um, so we might need to slap on more parachutes. And that is going to change things. Okay, now we're right at the limit. Now we're at 17.9. Uh, Let me recalculate this. So now with a 320 ISP, we're at 4,400, which isn't enough. And uh, with the with the 340 estimate, we, we're at 4,670. So it's tough. It's tough to get working with... Uh, I mean, it's such a low payload mass. Now, once we unlock more parts and we don't have this 18 ton restriction anymore things will be a lot easier if we add better engines I mean I don't think we're gonna get a better engine than this honestly in terms of the thrust the ISP uh, this is about as good as we're gonna get actually uh, for an 18 ton rocket uh, with bigger rockets we'll get better engines but uh, under the limits that we have this this is about it um, so a single stage to orbit system let's let's actually call it that stage to orbit one. Now, a uh, few things to note. Obviously, uh, the calculation will be different if we don't have the 18 ton limit. In the case of a general rocket without the 18 ton limit, the limit will actually be what sort of engines you manage to put on your single stage. You know, we could have put five engines here and then the limit will be dependent on the thrust of those engines. So, for instance, this engine has max thrust of uh, 215, which means its absolute maximum liftoff capacity is 21.5, but that's not going to get you up very quickly. Uh, you basically end up with a hover over the launch pad. In fact, the 18-ton mass limit that they give you at the beginning of the game happens to be about right for the limit of this LVT-30 engine. Uh, so it's not an accidental limit that they put there. That's that's about what you would want to uh, have if you only have one of these engines at the bottom of the stage. So, yep, it's actually a pretty convenient limit when you think about that. All right, so, yep, uh, now I want to try this out, but I'm not going to bring it to orbit just yet. What I want to try it out on is a mission that we had extant, and let's remind ourselves of that. That is the... Uh, EVA report on the surface at Macri's belt. Now since we don't need to get into orbit, I don't need the full system. I can drop some of the mass and, well, I don't know, maybe we should test the whole thing. It's going to be a long drop for the poor Kerbal though. 8.8 .8 meters. <laughs> That's actually pretty high for, uh, for a 1 meter tall Kerbal. I think he'll be alright. Okay. Uh, and we'll, we'll be using Jeb again. So let's try and hit that place at Macri's belt this time and fulfill that contract. Okay, here, here we are with Jeb. I corrected a minor staging, well minor, uh, a staging mistake uh, where we had everything in the same stage. That is always the first thing to check before you actually press the space bar to launch the thing. And, uh, well, electric charge is limited, but probably enough. We went all the way to the moon with that much, so hopefully that'll be okay. We're, we don't really have much clearance on the engine, but that's fine. The, the landing struts are just sort of making sure that it doesn't tip over once it lands. All right, Jeb. Let's see now. Our target is really the only location that we've got here. So activate navigation. Navigation set. Now, this isn't much of a gap, but I, I was really overdoing the compensation in previous episodes. Um, so yeah, at this latitude, Macri's belt is going to be uh, moving eastward with the rotation of the planets a little bit slower than the KSC, but not much slower. It should be possible to, to just aim directly at it. Uh, we're going to be slowed down in our orbital velocity by the atmosphere anyway. So I think, I think we might actually need to correct. Uh, somebody mentioned in the, in the comments that actually probably should be correcting the opposite direction that it was when I originally tried for it. So, and that's probably true. Alright, so, but uh, I'll just aim directly for it. Uh, let's, it's, it's more or less a north or south thing. 
And so it's not like we're trying to hit something way to the west or east. Okay. Alright, Jeb, here we go. Whoa. That that was due to the I guess the lining struts weren't quite balanced. We still need to go pretty far up first. Oh no! I forgot we don't have I didn't put any fuel lines. That's that's another complication, right. Um that, that that's a complication I can deal with. I'll just transfer the fuel manually. Hopefully they still let you do that, right? Uh no they don't? Uh oh, uh, abort, abort. Um uh oh. What the we can't transfer fuel? Okay, wait. So uh, we've got a problem here. Uh, I thought we'd be able to transfer fuel using... Normally what you would do is you cl uh, click on a part, uh, press Alt and click on another part and you can transfer fuel between them. But uh, right now we can't do that. So I'm gonna have to abort this launch, Jeb. And uh, we're gonna have to use the remaining fuel in this stage to uh, to make a soft landing. So this this whole idea, no good. Okay, parachutes. Obviously we're carrying a lot more mass here than we were supposed to be with the landing and that's why I definitely needed the uh, extra fuel in here to help us soften the blow. In fact, uh, let's... That was a little bit too ambitious, a little bit too early there. Okay, well, he's back safely. Let's recover him. Okay, so I decided to modify the VS-2A and I'm using these modular girder segments to extend the landing gear down, though that's a costly thing to do because these guys are, have a mass of 0.125 a piece. So four of them is 0.5 tons, which is a lot on something like this, which is only 11.1 .1 tons. But, uh, and I, I used to be very reluctant to do this because uh, they look, I mean, they're not quite as streamlined as I normally like to make my stuff, but now we have all these new tools, and so I'm going to try and remedy the unsightliness of it at least by uh, so tucking them in like that. Hopefully that's not going to cause too much of a problem with the engine. And I'm also going to uh, tilt these. Well, that doesn't give too much clearance. Can we shift these down a little bit more? Oh, well, that looks good, doesn't it? I think that looks good. Okay. Let's see, it retracted. Oh, that's not too bad, is it? I think that looks fine. All right, and I've got the, uh, on the VS-2A we use this booster, and I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it down below here. So it's going to be like that. Uh, this portion up here has a delta V of about uh, 3,050 to 3,200, somewhere around there. And then uh, we've got this booster to help us out as well. This is uh, going to be expended and just disposed of, and this all hopefully will be recovered safely. Um, hopefully, yep, yeah, hopefully. Alright, so, uh, yep, we're gonna go with this and try to hit Mactree's belt again. Well, our design options sure are limited with, uh, the inability to transfer fuel the way we used to be able to. They, they really, they really crimped my style with that. Oh well. Okay, here we go, Jeb. Let's go. While he's heading up there, activate navigation to Macri's belt. Just going straight up in this phase. Hope it doesn't destroy the launch pad once I decouple this thing. It's a tiny little thing left over. Okay.
Just waiting to see if it destroys anything. Well, so far the girder segments like this seem to be working out fine. Oop, come on. Keep going down there. Uh, but I think we're going to have to actually retro burn. I think we're overshooting by a lot. And we're running out of electric charge. This was not a good deal. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. I must be out of it today. No, I don't think I'm gonna hit at all. I definitely did a bad job of this one. You're way off. But uh, I'll keep the EV report. Somebody said that I should st still keep the EV, EV report even though there's no signs, just in case that happens to think that I was close enough. I don't think I'm close enough though. And I don't have enough fuel to maneuver any better than this. So I'm just gonna call this a test of this system and parachutes. It didn't cost too much to launch this. Okay, well, 7.5. Probably safe, let's see. Oh, uh, SAS. Oh no, oh no, uh... uh ooh. Okay, well, so we're not gonna recover everything here. Ah, uh, come on. All right, there we go. All right, EVA for me, please, Jeb. Yes, that's the intention. Okay. All right, let's get an EV report here. I'm gonna keep the data this time. Uh, can I get you to board the capsule again, Jeb? Okay, so uh, come on, Jeb. Okay, there you go. All right, let's recover the capsule first. Okay, no real data here. We've got uh, 2,300 for those parts and crew member fine. Uh, didn't fulfill the contract. Let's grab the other parts quickly. Okay, recover. Oh, we've got some other possible contracts, but let's focus on this one. Okay, here we go. If at first you don't succeed, and uh, yeah, just just for you know, the disposable amount that we're losing from the booster is 700 funds, so that's how much I'm losing. But so yeah, we ended up uh, way east, so definitely still need to correct west. Okay, here we go. Okay, booster away. We also way overshot the thing. So I'm gonna need to turn a little bit quicker. Obviously, once we get this sort of system nailed down, I'll be able to do more of these sorts of missions and that'll be to our benefit and we sure do need those funds and science points. Well, this looks a lot better. A lot better, okay. Okay, let's... Get some good control over this. And... Looks pretty good to me. 
All right, so we'll parachute down, and then we're probably going to have to do some burning because we were going down too fast last time. Now, if this doesn't make it, next time I'm just going to have to plop him somewhere close and have him walk over there. But I don't know if we're going to get a message that we're really at the location or not. Maybe I'll have him walk around a little bit. Looks a little bit away from it. Okay. Looks like SAS is holding it. All right. Uh, oh, EVA for me. Yeah. And he's going to fall off. We plop. Okay. All right, up you get. Oh, don't knock it. Oh, oh, oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. I uh, yeah. Ooh. Jeb, you always lose those top tanks. What can we do with you? I don't know. Where where uh, I'll keep a EVA report, but I wish we actually had navigation with him. So I don't even have a compass. Where's the sun? Ah, uh, high noon kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's tough to figure out where to go. The, the coast, towards the coast a bit. Oh, it was, okay, maybe if I zoom out. No, I still can't see the coast. Where are you, coastline? There you are. Okay, so we have to head that direction. Sorry about this, Jeb, but you got some walking to do. Let's uh, do physical time warp. Alright, well, I'm going to be persistent about this. I'm going to get there somehow. I'll catch up with you once it seems like I've got it. By the way, if you're wondering how to do physical time warp, you hold Alt, then press the period key to advance the time warp. So as long as you're holding down Alt, it'll force the physical time warp, which is all you can do with, uh, with a Kerbal on the surface. And so even though it looks like we've been walking for quite a long time, I've been going at 4x time warp, so not as long for me, though still a little bit tedious, though it's given me a chance to finish off my coffee. Jeb has been walking for quite a long time. We uh, we seem to be closer to Macri's belt. Definitely, definitely more than halfway. But it's been a while. In fact, it's been so long that it's getting to be dark here. And Jeb has walked 2.2 kilometers from uh, from his capsule. Quite a long ways. Hopefully at some point we'll actually reach this Matrix belt. Seems to have a very, very tight tolerance. Not, uh, not a wide circle around it. Are we actually trying to find a belt? I mean, is it that small? I don't know. Oh my, I just got the message. Uh, sorry, I wasn't recording because it's such a long thing. But I just got the message that I'm entering Matrix belt. I'm going to take the EVA report. Uh, yeah, it probably was necessary. Um, boy, oh boy, that was a long trip. It's pitch black out. Jeb had to use his helmet lights for much of this. And uh, finally, it's been done. How far away from... I don't even know if we'll be able to see our pod. Let's, let's target the pod. Can we? Probably not. Anyway, uh, definitely uh, like three kilometers or more. And uh, I, I seriously think we were trying to look for a belt considering how close we have to get to the location. Uh, and if we find a guy named MacTree uh, in the astronaut complex, we're going to have a word with him and possibly hire him and do something horrible to him. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, so, uh, well, I gotta admit, uh, Jeb made up for the fact that he uh, knocked into his rocket and destroyed part of it uh, by fulfilling this contract. Uh, persistence has prevailed, and now let's recover him. Okay, so uh, no science with the actual trip, but obviously science uh, fulfill, uh, from fulfilling the contract. And we need to pick up the parts that we had left behind. So let's go there. Okay, so recover that. Next, next. Recover this. Okay. Uh, well, now we have one contract slot free, so let's take a look at what our options are. Okay, so we can form visual surveys of Kerbin. Let's see, oh, there's two of these EVA reports. I think I would like to have a rover for those things. So I'm going to hold off, maybe. Uh, otherwise, it's going to take a long time, two locations for that. But I might have to take it anyway. Uh, the way we go, yeah, okay, don't read those things. Um... I want you to send science data from space around the moon. Transmit or recover science data from space around the moon. Should be easy enough to do. Not much actual science gain from that, though. I'll think about that. I Probably I'll ponder these for a little bit. Ah, rescue a Kerbal. That would be interesting to show how to do without uh, maneuver nodes. That would be an interesting thing. Um, test LVT-45 orbiting Kerbin. That would be tricky because uh, you have to ignite the engine when in orbit. So you can't just use it on the launch pad. But mm, yeah, that'd be tricky with the kind of payloads we're talking about. Uh, possible though. Test small gear bay in flight over Kerbin. Well, that's easy enough. We haven't really done a plane in the career mode yet. Yeah, I, I agree with Gene there. This is this is more like what I would be looking for. And yeah, I think uh, basically uh, uh, a mission to Duna is not too far off in terms of Delta V from a mission to the moon. So actually this is very doable in terms of Delta V. The question is whether I can actually hit Duna at all, given the fact that we don't have maneuver nodes and don't even have the patched conics yet because uh, uh, I would like to at least see if we're actually hitting Duna or not. So it's a tricky business, and we will have to send uh, Kerbal out to it. And yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a trick. I'd have to ponder that as well. Probably what would happen is if we actually manage to get around Duna, that, that Kerbal will probably have to stay around there for a while. Maybe do the Explore Ike as well, but then he'd need a lot more fuel. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to think about these. Let's turn to the tech tree. We now have 108 science to work with. So the science limit, uh, it says uh, 100 science, right? Let me go back out for a sec. Yeah, here it says research science limit 100. Well, that's a limit on how much you can get, not how much you can have. So when we go in here, we have more than 100. Uh, I guess that also means that maybe we can't, uh, oh, uh, we can't uh, distribute more than 100 science to one of these research projects. So basically this tier is the limit for us right now. Okay. Oh, uh, this is, okay, this has a reaction wheel in it. But does it have SAS? Yes, it has stability assist SAS. So the problem we had with this one, this didn't have stability assist SAS. And that one does. Um... And I guess uh, that's the equivalent of what Jeb does for us, I think. I think that's what uh, that means. And I could do with talking about RCS, something we haven't talked about in terms of maneuvering in space. So that's interesting. And also we could do the rescue a Kerbal mission if we have RCS uh, a lot easier than if we didn't. And also the probe core would help with that because we could keep the pod empty so that the Kerbal could uh, head in there. Huh. So that's that's the possibilities there. Uh, here, well, we have batteries, so we don't really need to unlock more batteries yet. Though the solar panels could be useful, though we managed to get to the moon without unlocking them. 
so maybe we don't need them so much. Lights would be a friendly addition. The thermometer is uh, is something I would like a lot in order to get more science. These, uh, I mean, we gotta test the gear bay maybe, but that's not uh, high priority. This is our first jet engine, so if we wanted to do planes, we'd probably need this part at least, and probably the jet engine would be helpful. Radial decoupler. Well, radial decoupler isn't going to be very necessary unless we can fuel feed properly, at least that's what I think. And the LVT-45 is... I mean, the benefit of the LVT-45 here is that it... Oh, it doesn't let me keep the message there. It has a gimbal range, which means it can help with steering. But that's at the expense of thrust. And right now, I think if we got to keep close to the 18 ton limit, uh, we really do want that thrust more than we want the gimbal range. So that's not a big thing. I think the most constructive thing would be to go with the Probodobodyne Octo here and hope that the SAS stability assist will be enough to uh, keep us steady. Uh, this is uh, tight margins here. Okay, well I'm going to go with that and I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to hold off on unlocking anything else. We'll stick with this first and see if we can... What I want to do with this is now build an unmanned mission to land on the lunar surface and thereby fulfill the contract that we have uh, extant to, uh, to explore the moon. Alright, so next episode I'm going to try and use this Probodobodyne Octo to launch a mission to the surface of the moon. Uh, probably non-recoverable. I'm probably just going to land it and leave it there, but we're going to thereby fulfill the contract. So that's my goal. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.